All right, guys, let's do example three and four together real quick, and we'll be out of here, and you can uh, hopefully uh, work on your homework and understand this stuff, right? So um, we want to talk about exponential decay models, models that people have figured out uh, from doing lots of regressions that uh, this is the way decay functions work, and so we can take advantage of their work and use a formula to come up with uh, a real-life situation problem solution. Again, amazing that math is able to give us models like these that we can use to make predictions and see what goes on in the real world based on abstract objects like numbers and mathematics. Okay, really, really amazing. And so in any case, um, remember this will be given to you, all right? We will give this formula to you. Memorizing a bunch of formula is not too important. This is not too important for you to memorize, at least. Uh, just remember, we've we've done over the, we've gone over this before. Uh, a would be the initial amount, so this a value is the initial amount. Uh, ooh, maybe I should redraw that arrow. The initial amount is a. Let's do this. Initial amount is a. All right, and r is the percent decrease. R is the percent decrease. R is the percent decrease. Okay. And uh, T, T is T years, okay? T is time in years. So, uh, so this would be years, okay? So, um, yeah, we've used this before, and we call this quantity 1 minus R, the decay factor. So 1 minus R, R is a percentage, which is a decimal between 0 and 1. If I subtract that from 1, then I will, still, I will also get a decimal. So this will always be a number between 0 and 1. Okay, so this is actually just a, exactly what we did before. It's a just a model for an exponential decay function. Okay, this would be my b value, my decay, which we, here is called the decay factor. Okay, nothing really different there. Uh, we've done this before. Just showing you that you can also use a model to show a, a decay relationship. So what types of things decay? Well, one of the biggest things humanity is concerned with is, are our vehicles, okay? So cars, motorbikes, snowmobiles, homes, things like that. Things that decay or depreciate in value, that lose value, okay? So um, example three, first example says, a new snowmobile costs 4,200 bucks. The value of the snowmobile decreases by 10% each year. Uh, write the model. So please don't get confused. They're just saying write the model. So this says write the model. Okay. And then it says estimate the value after three years. Two separate questions there. Okay. Before we go there, so we can write down the model from here. Let's write it down. Y equals A times 1 minus R to the T. All right. So that tells us that this is a good model to show how the value of the snowmobile will decrease, all right? Uh, and, and again, you'd have to know that uh, this type of a relationship is exponential decrease, which we've been giving us a, given a situation like that. If you were doing this on your own, you'd have to do some regression or something. Okay. Any case, so my initial amount, the initial amount, the initial price of the snowmobile here is A, which is 4,200. And then my... Uh, Percentage decrease is 10%, but please remember, this must be expressed as a decimal, okay? So this is 0 0.1. Remember to change a percentage to a decimal. Here is the decimal point right now. You move it two back, right? So 0 0.10 or just 0 0.1. That's the decimal equivalent of 10%. Just remember that. Also, a very common mistake students make is just plugging 10 to the formula that's not going to work. You're going to end up with a completely incorrect equation. Okay, and then write the model. So let's answer the first part of the question. Write the model. So what that means is just substitute the two numbers that they gave you in the first sentence. So uh, forty-two hundred dollars here, one minus zero point one to the t. Okay, we were not given a t value yet. That's the model. So this answers this part of the question. That's the model. Okay, then they say estimate the value after three years. Now I go and do my substitution 
uh, for t for three years, so 4200 times, and one minus uh, 0 0.1 is 0 0.9 to the three years. Okay, three years. And so you do that, punch that in your calculator, and you get y is approximately $3,061.80. Uh, let me just say, you should probably clean this up and write the model like this from the get-go, okay? Uh, both will work, but uh, it's maybe just cleaner for you to see what you're doing. So, please remember, this is the answer to the first question. This is the model, okay? And then this is the answer to the second question. Uh, this is the value after three years. The value after three years. Okay. And then graph the equation using your calculator and estimate when the value of the snowmobile will be 2,500. So you plug this in to your calculator. This function right here, plug the model into your calculator. Y equals... 4,200 times 0 0.9 to the t. Uh, in your calculator, remember, t would actually be switched out for x, so you type that in. And then um, you have to ask yourself, we've done this many, many times too, what number are they giving me here? So they're saying, graph the equation in your calculator and estimate when. When is a time question. What will time be, or on your calculator, what will x be? Okay. When this happens, the value of the snowmobile is 2,500. So 2,500, as you can see here, okay, dollar amounts are y values. They are the value of the snowmobile after a certain amount of time. So this is a y value. So in your calculator, you're graphing this function, and then you're graphing y equals 2,500, and you want to find the intersection. I would try something like zoom fit. Zoom fit typically works well. And if you find the intersection between this function and the model, then or this line and the model, you get an answer that is x, which is t, is about 4.9 years. Okay, about 4.9 years. All right, um, so that's example three. Again, you're given a model, you just plug stuff in and you use it. All right. This is just showing you how useful math is to solve real-world problems. In this case, how does my money or the value of my uh, asset decrease? Okay. Uh, in this case, this is a rather uh, controversial example. Um, and I think what I'll do here is I'm not going to do example four with you here. Um, I think this is a very, very similar idea. You, you're given a model and they're asking you plug in a number. Actually, this is maybe even easier than the one we were given before. Um, so all you have to do here is uh, solve this model for a certain number. Uh, so what I think I included here for you is a picture, and I'm not sure if this is in your textbook or if this is in the AP Bio textbook or in the biology textbook. Any case, uh, I'll read it with you, but then we really need to think about this. Okay, there's something going on here that's a little bit deceptive, and uh, in my statistics textbook, they talk about this very clearly. Statisticians are afraid of situations like this. In algebra, they're just using it to show you a principle, and they kind of gloss over an important problem with this question. Uh, I guess let me let me do this part A with you, and part B I will go over with you in class. Okay. So uh, part A, when an animal, plant or animal dies, it stops acquiring carbon-14 from the atmosphere. Carbon-14 decays over time with a half-life of about 5,730 years. The percent P of the original amount of carbon-14 that remains in a sample after T years is given by this. Okay, so they've done all the work for you here. They're saying uh, half-life is 5,730 years. Uh, T here is year, measured in years, time in years, okay? And then P is the percent of original carbon that remains, okay? So percent of remaining carbon, okay? So there's the function, and what they're asking you to do is just, again, plug in something and use a model that some other person figured out. 
Okay, we're not really doing anything complicated. Actually, this would depend on a regression, uh, regression model, and this regression is not something we do too much of in this class. It's a more of a statistics procedure, but uh, that would be an exponential regression. Okay, so what percent of the original copper 14 remains after 2,500 years? So I don't have to really think here. I'm just saying, oh, they gave me a T and plug it into the function. So percent is 100% times the decay factor, which is one half. And then instead of T, I just plug in 2,500 over 5,730. All right. And you just type that straight into your calculator and you would get the percentage of remaining carbon is about 73.9%. Okay. That's it. So let's talk about this part B in class. I'll show you some things from my statistics textbook and from some other science textbooks. All right. I hope this helped, guys. Uh, yeah, I hope you can enjoy your class. Thanks.